always go ahead and mute. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start the webinar, and then I'll we'll let people come in, and and then we'll uh, we'll go. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the South Carolina High School League Spring Sports Captain's Leadership Workshop, sponsored by Farm Bureau Insurance. I am Romanda Noble Watson, the Director of Public Relations and Communications with the South Carolina High School League. And I have the fortunate pleasure of hosting today's workshop that I know will be exciting and enlightening for all of you. Before we begin today's workshop, I bring to the screen Commissioner of the South Carolina High School League, Dr. Jerome Singleton, to provide some opening remarks. Thank you, Amanda. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. As leaders, you've been specifically selected to be a part of this Captain's Leadership Workshop. I ask that you do two things. You're being presented to by great presenters. I want these two things for you to do. Actively participate. And then I ask that you retain and share. Have a great workshop. I'll turn it back over to Director Noble Watson. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Singleton. And now let's get this workshop started. Our first speaker is in her fourth year as the Director of Athletics at Columbia College. Prior to Columbia College, she spent 35 years in a public education in Richland District 1 at Lower Richland High School in Hopkins, South Carolina. She, she was a physical educator, girls basketball coach, and athletics director. While at Lower Richland, she served on the South Carolina Athletic Coaches Association Board of Directors for 4A. And in her 24 years as the girls coach, she earned seven state championships and several Coach of the Year honors. A product of Lower Richland High School, she is a member of three, yep, three Hall of Fames, South Carolina Athletic Coaches Association, South Carolina Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame, and the Columbia College Athletics Hall of Fame. Yes, she's working at her alma mater. Here to bring you best practices for leading your team and sportsmanship is Ms. Debbie Warlock. Hello, everyone, and um, I'd like to thank the South Carolina High School League and Romanda Watson for the invitation to present. I have been out of high school um, for about four years, so presenting at this um, workshop is, Captain's Course workshop is, is really gratifying to me, so thank you so much. So what we're going to talk about today is um, just being a captain, um, what it's like to, to lead your team and some of the best practices about leading. So my presentation will not be long, but if you have questions, um, please he don't hesitate to write them in the chat and Amanda is monitoring the chat. So um, some of the best practices, what we need to understand about being a captain and being a leader on a team is is not a 
everything in a basket and can fit in a basket. There'll be opportunities for leading. There'll be opportunities for just sitting and observing and doing what you have to do. You don't want the element of leadership to overtake your perspective of your sport or what people expect you to do. So sometimes um, it can be burden, but it's really more challenging when you're being a captain and being a leader on your team. Oh, so let's move forward. So what do captains do? What do leaders do? So leaders, there's a, there's a need for growth. There's a, um, there are needs that people have to depend on. The need for being the leader. When you look at the picture, um, the bird in the front, he's leading everyone. So basically that's a need. He's showing the direction in which way to go. Um, when he gets tired, of course, they go to the end, but he's really important in this aspect because he's leading right now. And then you have growth. Growth is the things that, gosh, it may not directly come from something that is intentional and it's unintentional. It's sort of like what you see on the screen, their growth in the plant, it needs the water, it needs nutrients from the soil, it needs the sun in order to grow. And then there's a well-being kind of thing. We need to stretch, we need to be ready to participate in that kind of um, element, just having the team ready. So what is your responsibility as a leader, you say? So what leaders do? Needs and growth sometimes is not a captain's responsibility because there are certain things that you will not be able to do. We have administrators, you have your athletics director, and you have your coach that will take care of the needs. They will take care of ordering the equipment, making sure everything works right, everything is put where it needs to be. That's really not your responsibility. The growth part of it, making sure that the program that you are in is sustainable, making sure that um, student athletes are coached in the right way. So there's a beginning and there's an end and there's some growth between there. That's really kind of not your responsibility. So the most important part of it is the well-being part. And you think, well, what does she mean about the well-being or what leaders do? What I'm saying is, when they score a goal and it's celebration time, being in on the celebration, regardless if you helped or not, just making sure you pat someone on the back. Now, this is a picture of someone riding the back, but it's kind of like that celebration moment. That's what leaders do. Um, you could be the young lady who goes over during the celebration and pat someone on the back. That's what leaders do. You did a good job. Let's celebrate. It could be the point where someone has just scored a goal or have done something in practice or really have done something and you're in that moment where you come over and say, yeah, good job. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, the next thing could be in the huddle. In the huddle, that's where leaders and captains really show up for people. Um, you're in a huddle. It's, very, it's a very intentional moment and it could be an intense moment. As a captain, you could look over and make sure that people are engaged, that people are paying attention. If someone's out of the circle or out of the huddle, who needs to be in the huddle, move them in and say, hey, pay attention. Or here, take my place, especially if you're not in the game yet. This is a very specific kind of captain leadership, captain moment. The next moment could be another celebratory thing. Um, they did a good job, or what if they didn't do a good job and they lost the ball out of bounds, or they um, did not um, score the goal? You know, the captains are the ones who sort of um, bring that energy to the to the moment. You go over and you give somebody a high five and say, "You know what? Don't worry about it. We got another game to play, or there'll be another opportunity for you to score." So just giving them praise when they need to praise. These opportunities don't take really a long time to do. Very short, in the moment, hey, it's going to be better. And that's 
what students do. And the last thing is congratulating, making sure that you shake the opponent's hand, that you tell them good game, that you, you, you are gracious in winning and gracious in losing. As a captain, you would be the one who ensures that everybody gets in line because a lot of times either coach is going to be at the front of the line at the end of the line so what happens in the middle of the line you could be that person who stands in the middle of the line to make sure that people are doing what they're doing um and it's the well-being part the well-being part is really that of what we consider a servant leader thinking about the well-being of those athletes those teammates that you have on your team. It's, it's a part of being a team. This is the thing that makes the team special. These are the things that when you look back five years from now, you talk about the good things or the fun things that happen on that team. 10 years from now, you may share it with family and friends when you return to um school for reunions and, and those types of things. So just being that leader, that captain, you're checking in on people, but also you are not going to lose yourself in this. It could be very overwhelming to do that. So what I want to tell you and what I want you to leave with this is that making sure you check on the well-being of your teammates. And those can be some of the things that are intentional and unintentional. Um, the celebratory opportunities, the opportunities in the huddle, the opportunities at the beginning of practice, the opportunities you have going to practice, um, the opportunities you have in the hall, hallways, in the classrooms, in the cafeteria, on the buses, just sometimes checking in on a person saying, hey, you ready for practice? And that may open up to something a little more intentional. So think about and consider the well-being of others, the well-being of your teammates. And one important thing, don't forget the coach. Check on, check on them as well. So Thank you so much for my presentation and allowing me to present today. And you can take it, Romanda. You're muted. So you said needs, growth, and well-being are the three, are three of the important facets of being a captain. So, and I, you touched on it just a little. So the one question that is how you talked about ensuring that they get in that line, but what happens when that the teammate is just not showing that sportsmanship? What would you say would be the one thing that you can possibly do to ensure that your team show the sportsmanship that you talked about? You know, that's that's a great question, Romanda. And that's really one of those intentional moments. You know, moments because on a soccer team, if you have um our soccer teams are are kind of large. 20 people on the soccer team, you may not see as a, a coach may not witness when a player is being unsportsmanlike, but the captain might, or the captain may get wind of it later on. That's one of those intentional moments. Let's go and have this conversation. Let's pull them out because it may come better. It may be a better situation if a peer talk to them, that peer leadership, Let, let's Let's have this conversation. Hey, God, you know, you know, we shouldn't do this, or, or hey, so and so, we shouldn't do it like this, and we have to be gracious in our wins and our loss, and regardless of what happens, let's just be, you know, be a better version of what we were in the in the line just a few minutes ago. Just make it better. And I know, and some words of encouragement. And this intentional moment does not have to be a preaching moment, and it does not have to be very long. Because a lot of times in teachable moments, if it's quick and swift, we may remember it more. That, that um, Romanda is a part of my team and Romanda called me out for not shaking hands or doing something 
interesting at the end of my 100 meter dash that I shouldn't have done. She came over as a teammate. Now, I might not appreciate it now, but when I sit down in the stands and say, you know what, I shouldn't have done that, then that's when it really is appreciated. Thank you so much. I, I think that sportsmanship is the one thing that we want to always, being a leader or a teammate, we want to always display sportsmanship throughout everything that we do. And um, well, thank you, Debbie, so much for that presentation, some of the things that we could take with us throughout this season. You're welcome. So the next speaker for the South Carolina High School League Spring Sports Captain Leadership Workshop sponsored by Far Bureau Insurance will definitely present you with some tools for you to carry throughout your season. He's affectionately known as Coach P. He has over 20 years in, excuse me, in education. He has been a teacher, a coach, and principal, and currently serves as coordinator of athletics, arts, and physical education for school district five of Lexington and Richardson counties. He fundamentally believes that all of us are coaches, coaches who have the responsibility to prepare everyone around us for the greatest game. He is a father, a husband, and the author of two leadership books. I lead little book on leadership and winning the game of life and, well, and winning the game of life. Welcome to the screen, a guy that has taught leadership to thousands and thousands of elementary and middle school students and is here to give you the responsibilities of a captain, Stephen Puckett. All right, everybody. Good morning to you. This is Coach P. And man, good to kind of see you. I wish I could be a little more in person with you. Uh, but that's okay. I want to make sure that I leave you with some great things to hopefully um, change the trajectory of your season um, for your team, for your school, uh, but most importantly, for your life. Um, I say that I say this statement all the time. Life is the greatest game we ever get to play. Think about that. Life is the greatest game we ever get to play. So we want to be prepared and ready for that. Now, I'm going to talk to you specifically today about um, the responsibilities of a captain. So let me see if I can share this and see if you can see this. I'm a captain, now what? Okay, I'm a captain, now what? So here, I wanna share with you two things before I jump into to the meat of our content, but everything I'm gonna say to you today, I believe is equally important. I hope you can hear me, I hope you can lock in. Uh, I wanna share something with you at the end too, um, a, a giveaway, um, so stay tuned. Don't disengage. Got some good stuff for you. So I'm a captain. Now what? Now, here's the first thing. Being a captain is not a title. Now, I know about titles because I think I affectionately have the longest title in my school district. I'm the coordinator of athletics, visual and performing arts and physical education. That is a mouthful, a sentence by itself. The reality is the title doesn't make me any of those things. OK, what makes me the coordinator of athletics, what makes me the coordinator of visual and performing arts, what makes me the coordinator of physical education is that I choose to do the things that my job is asking of me and requiring me to do. Now, I'll say this. Not everyone here today listening to this, not everyone will be a captain. You got the title and somehow somebody, your coach, whoever, your, your teammates, however you did the voting process or however you got elected, somebody sees the potential that you possess to be a captain, to be a leader, to take it up a, a level. But make no mistake about it, that being a captain is not a title. It's a choice. Your choices will determine if you will be a captain. Your ability to incorporate the items we're going to talk to today about today will determine whether or not you will truly be a captain. Now, ne next thing I want to say, that being a captain is not a popularity contest. When I was in high school, I had the opportunity to run for student body president, and I felt good about my chances to be elected as student body president. And I started this campaign, and I hung up posters through the um, school. Um, I got on the morning announcements, and I did something special. Man, I, I put this song together, and I sang this song, and I was wanting to make sure that everybody knew that I was running for president. I wanted everybody to know that I was going to be student body president. But you know what? I really didn't know what I was getting into. I was running based on popularity. 
And I actually got elected student body president, but short after, shortly after that, the work started. And I realized that being elected to a position of leadership is not a popularity contest. It's actually work. It's actually, you have to apply yourself. And I'll tell you this, that your effectiveness as a captain, it won't be defined by your popularity. It will be defined by your ability to make decisions that sometimes are unpopular. That's right. Sometimes you're going to have to make a decision that everybody around you is not going to agree with. Everybody may be facing this direction, but you know you need to be facing the other direction. So let me say this. If you care about what people think, if you're more concerned about what people think about you than being a captain, you're not fit to be a captain because you're going to have to make decisions that sometimes aren't very popular. So I want to jump into I'm a captain now, what? And here's the five responsibilities that I think we got. We want to focus on. First of all, you got to be an exemplar. And I love that word, exemplar. What is an exemplar? Um, you, you know what it is. It basically, it's an example. But as a teacher, like if I'm teaching a class or a coach, I'm saying in the world of athletics, um, as a former basketball coach, you know, when I would, one of the most fundamental things I knew was going to help my team be successful was the ability to box out. Or when a shot goes up, everybody has to make sure we've got a body on somebody. And there's a certain way to do that. Where should your hands be? Where should your elbows be? How should you position yourself? What do you say during the process? So what I would do is I would take a couple of guys who have been on the team for three or four years, and I would pull them out and let everyone see them. They were the exemplar of this is what you do to correctly box out. You are that exemplar for your team as a captain. Your actions, your words, your commitment. Your effort should be the standard for the team. What you do, you're actually approving with your actions. What you allow, you're approving. So you got to check yourself. You got you to ask yourself, am I being an example that if everybody else on the team is following, my team would be better? That's the first thing. You got to be an exemplar. The next thing, you got to be inclusive. The question I have for you, do your actions and your words create unity or disunity? Listen to me, team. We live in a world right now where everybody is looking for an opportunity to be divisive. Everybody's looking for an opportunity to almost to be hateful or mean spirited or just to get get something over on somebody. There's just not a lot of kindness sometimes and people want to create disunity. You got to be countercultural in that respect, because as a captain, you've got to make sure that you are inclusive. Do your actions and your words, do they promote unity? The goal of a team, listen to me, the goal of a team is to is to rally around a common goal, a common purpose, and a compass interest. you got to see we and not me. You can't be self-absorbed, only worried about how will this benefit me or how does it affect me. As a captain, you have to put the best interest of the we above me. All right. Next one, value and add value. All right. Now, I, I, this is this is fantastic. And I, I got to show you some pictures. All right. First of all. All right. So here's my first picture. And I I am a sneaker head. I love sneakers. I love shoes. Now, this first shoe that you'll see of the red and black Jordan there, that is the actual um, shoe that Michael Jordan wore in, in his famous flu game. And if you're a fan of basketball, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about, that he actually contracted the flu and and they would, man, he's not even going to be able to play. He's got the flu. You know how it is when you don't feel good and you're sick. There's no way I can go play a game. And and the, as legend would have it, is Michael Jordan played this entire game with the flu, and he played it in these shoes. And because of that, the value of this shoe, of this pair of shoes, is $104,000. All right? That's what I'm talking about, all the sneakerheads out there. Now, look, the one on the right. Now, this is the actual pair of Converse that Michael Jordan wore when he won the national championship for the University of North Carolina. And this shoe has a, a value of $109,000, $109,000, dollars a lot of money for a pair of shoes. All right, I'm trying to show you what, what we talk about when we're talking about value. Look at this. Now, this is a, a Bugatti, and I'm not even going to tell you the name of the Bugatti because I know I will say it wrong. It's so fancy and it's so expensive that I can't even pronounce the name, all right? But it's worth $13.4 million dollars probably one of the, if not the most expensive, I think my, from my research, there was one other vehicle, one other car that had more, had more value than this car. This car alone, this one car is worth $13.4 million. Look at this. This is the most expensive, most valuable home in the world. And this is Buckingham Palace. And this is where 
the, the Queen of England live. You know, this is where royalty lives in England. But it, this, the value of this home is, it comes in at $2.9 billion. Now, I show you all of these things to kind of show you a visual image of what value is. Now, get ready for this next picture because I want you to put a price tag on it. Value. All those things I showed you, all of those, the, the, the shoes, the car, the home, worth millions and billions of dollars. Not one single item has more value than one of these one of these people on this image. That's the opportunity that you get as a captain. You get to value others and you get to add value to the people around you. It's more important than a vehicle. It's more important than shoes. It's more important than having the, the fanciest, most expensive home because you are pouring into people who are priceless, who you literally cannot put a, a value or an amount on the people that are around you. And so you got to value those around you and you need to help them see their role more clearly on a team. You know, everybody has a role. You may be the captain, you may be the most talented, gifted person on your team, but you go out there in a team sport and you try to play by yourself, you will not be winning any state championships because it's the team. The power of the team, the star of the team is the team, as Coach Wood would say. The star of the team is the team. So when you're looking at this, I want you to help people see their role more clearly. All right. Value people and add value to them. Number four, I want you to promote accountability, all right? You need to make sure that you speak life into people. Be vocal. Don't be critical with people. You need to make sure you're building people up. Use your words to encourage people. But you also have to speak the truth sometimes. But when you do speak the truth, don't do it in a critical or demeaning way. Look at them and speak to the value in that person and say, hey, Hey, let me show you something. Let me show you this. If you do this, if you can change this one thing, if you do this better, you're going to help the whole team be a lot better. Encourage them, but hold them accountable. All right. If you see something happen on your team that you know is sabotaging your team's success, it's your job as a captain, as, as a captain to show care to that person, but also show candor and go, go to them in the right way with the right attitude. Say, hey, man, hey, friend, if you do this, you're undermining our goal of trying to win. You're undermining our goal as a team. You're sabotaging us. You're setting us up to fail. So you've got to hold people accountable. But in order to do that, you got to value them. you got to care for them. And then they will allow you to speak into their life. The next one, be temperate. Um, I'm a Duke basketball fan. Hold the comments. Don't drop it in the chat. I'm sorry. No hating. I'm a Duke basketball fan. I followed Coach K for many years before he retired as the head um, basketball coach at Duke University. And I was watching some, I was either reading something or watching this documentary. And he was talking to one of his former captains. And he said that after, after the game, that Coach K pulled him into his office and he sat him down and he throwed up footage from the game. And when he, when he watched himself on, on camera, he could see that every time that something in, in the game would happen and it didn't go his way, he'd throw his hands up like that or he would, he'd, get, he'd have a, a bad facial expression or he'd get all upset or he'd go to the bench and just, and just flop down and show extreme frustration. And Coach K told him, say, I want you to look at what you're doing. You are sabotaging us because you are changing the trajectory of our team. You're changing our ability to win just by your, your, your inability, just because you can't be temperate with your emotions. As a captain, you have to be rock solid. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get upset. You're going to get mad. You're going to get angry. But you have to let your, be, let your emotions be temperate and that no matter what happens, that you stay steady, you stay the course, you don't get upset, don't wear your emotions on your sleeve. If something doesn't go your way, then you have a good attitude, a winning attitude, you push forward, and you worry about the next play, the next game, the next opportunity, all right? Don't let get don't get caught up in the emotional side of things. Lose your emotions, because when you lose your emotions, you lose, period, all right? Now, these five things that I've talked about, um, being an exemplar, being inclusive, um, hold, having accountability on your team, valuing people and adding value to others and being temperate with your emotions. All right. All of you do those things. This is a mathematical formula for you. If you do those things, those five things will equal trust and respect.
your team will respect you. They will trust you. Now, your team may not always like what you say or like what you do, but they will respect what you say because you've shown them these other five, um, the ability to incorporate these other five things. And not only that, but your team will trust you because they know at the end of the day, you're not doing what's best for you. You're not out and looking, being selfish about it. You are doing what's best for the team. So if you do those five things, they will automatically produce trust in you and respect for you among your team and your peers. And that's what I'm talking about. All right. So you see my email address down here, spucket at lexrich5.org. The first five people to email me, I'm going to send you um, one of my books. Um, it's right here. It's I lead. See it right there. All right. So the first five people to email me, I'm going to send you one of those books for free. If it's free, it's me. Somebody say, oh, come on now. All right. Hey, I appreciate it. You guys have been amazing. If you got any questions, um, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you, Coach Puckett. So the biggest thing that, when, as I was listening to you, the biggest thing that you, you started out with was captain is not a title, it is a choice. Um, so how does a captain, what are, what are some of the additional things other than just going out there and playing hard that you talked about that really a captain should really dig deep into to ensure that they are doing the things to not just be a choice. Well, and, and I'll, I'll say this, you know, first of all, you, you got to be an exemplar. Go back to that. You, mm -hmm. No matter what you say or do, if you don't show people through your actions who you are, then you're not going to be credible. In order to be a captain, you've got to be credible. All right. So I would say the first thing. And the second thing that I've seen, especially with with young men, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm a dad and I've been, you know, young, my, young myself at one point in time, I'm only 44 years old now, but my, my 13 year old is sometimes as, as sometimes it's hard for us to use our words to express appreciation. And it's hard to use our words to encourage and build somebody. I don't know what it is, but I found out that the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. And I used to be like, I used to be a real critical person. Like I, I would, when I would talk, I wouldn't speak much, but when I did speak, it was almost like it was it was counterproductive. I was tearing people down or I was critical of what they had just done. So you got to be positive. You got to speak life. And the more, more often you do that, the more comfortable you get. And it's so easy. But you'll be you'll be really surprised if you just see small things. Just use your words. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Hey, man, great shot. Keep up the good work. Hey, I saw how you I saw how you're running that sprint. That's what I'm talking about. That's going to make us all better. You know, just little things like that that are so easy to do. It just it's a habit of using our words to speak life. That's what I would say. Thank you so much. Definitely we'll take those five things with us as we continue on through our spring sports. And we're going to move on to our final speaker. Our final speaker is the executive director of the South Carolina Basketball Coaches Association. He is entering his fourth year as head boys basketball coach at Westwood High School. He has been coaching high school basketball for over 20 years. His resume includes stints at, as the head coach at Civil Bluff High School, Ridgeview High School, Ben Lippin, and now Westwood High School. Before coaching, he served on Eddie Fogel's basketball coaching staff at the University of South Carolina. Here today to speak to you on effective communication with coaches, players, and yes, your teachers as well, is Coach John Combs. Well, thank you so much for having me in today. Uh, I'm excited to be here. It was great to hear uh, Coach Puckett and Coach Wardlaw share some outstanding stuff with y'all. There was a lot of really good things that he shared, other than Coach Puckett talking about being a Duke fan, but we won't, we'll forgive him for that, even though the example he did share was uh, uh, the shoes was Michael Jordan's basketball shoes, so, which was a North Carolina guy. I know that probably pained him to do it, but um, let's talk a little bit about, I'd like to get right into it. Effective communication with coaches, players, and teachers. All of these things that Coach Wardlaw, Coach Puckett shared with you, a lot of them already touched on communication. And, you know, a co couple of things I like to start off with. And this is uh, a friend of mine who's I've had to speak to our basketball players before, a guy named Alan Stein. He talks about communication builds trust. Trust generates commitment. Commitment forges teamwork. Teamwork drives results. 
I, I've never been around the team that's achieved at its highest level without good communication at some point in time, without generating teamwork. You know, all these things are really, really important to do it. When do you communicate? Okay, uh, that's a great question that you should always you should always ask. When do you communicate? Well, the reality is you always communicate. You're always communicating. You're not only communicating when you talk, but there's so many different ways in which you communicate. Um, first, as how do you communicate? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. You know, a lot of times when people hear how you communicate, they think about, um, you know, talking. But it's not talking. It is your body language. It's you, you communicate with your eyes. You communicate with your, you know, your actions. You know, as uh, Coach Puckett talked about being an exemplar, you know, how you, uh, what's your example and how you communicate and how you do it. Non-verbally, you know, I think that's um, one of the biggest, this is probably, some of your teachers and your coaches probably talk about how you communicate non-verbally, but it is so incredibly important. There will be people that would tell you that 70 to 90 percent, and I don't know how accurate these figures are, 70 or 90 percent of your communication is through non-verbal means. You know, and, and Coach Puckett brought up the, the, uh, the, the, the young man for Duke who we shrugged his shoulders, he pouted, he clapped his hands, whatever he did, his body language wasn't good. Now, he may not have said anything, but it was his body language that communicated just frustration, negativity, uh, everything. And, our, and he didn't even have to say a word. But those things that you're communicating to your team is such valuable uh, thing. And in that case, he was communicating negative stuff. And he may have not have even realized that he was communicating all of those different things. Okay, I'm going to share with you real quick. Um, Quick video. So I would share, I would challenge you, you know, what does your body language say about you? When, what does your body language say about you when the umpire makes a bad call or when the official gives you a, a bad call or what, what's your body language like when you pass the ball and uh, your, your teammate drops it or it's a pop fly and you're, you're, you're the pitcher and your teammate drops it when he should catch it. What does your body language say? Does your body language say frustration or is it talking about next play? You go out there and talk to them. Maybe that person who dropped it, that's their first time in the outfield. Does the pitcher, if you're the pitcher, do you go up there to, hey, let's go get this next one? Because you're instilling confidence in them. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to be frustrated. Now, I like acronyms. This is one of my favorite acronyms out there called KYP. Uh, coach Wardlaw probably knows this one. I've got I I got this one from legendary coach George Glimp from Eau Claire High School. I had an opportunity. He was almost like an assistant coach with me uh, back in the day when his grandson played for me at Ridgeview High School. The KYP is know your personnel. And this means a lot of different things. You know, know your personnel. Like I would imagine if you're a pitcher, you know, and you know a guy likes to hit hit a fastball high up in the strike zone, you wouldn't throw him a fastball high in the stri strike zone. If you're a basketball player, there's certain guys that I wouldn't throw the ball to to let them dribble up the court because that's not their uh, specialty. But this also goes for communication. Know who you're talking to. You know, I've been around different guys that, you know, sometimes just uh, saying a kind word to them, going at them with a little, you know, with a nicer touch it, is the way that you need to talk to them. And then some guys I've been around that I, I've got to be a little bit firmer with. I might have to raise my voice to grab their attention. Well, that's where you as a captain try to get to know your guys, know who you're talking to, know what motivates your teammates. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. That is that can be extremely difficult. You know, the, also the one of the most important things is here, get to know what's going on with the, the young men in your program. Get to know what's going on with your coaches, too. I heard the other presenters talked about, you know, Coach Wardlaw talked, you, you know, your coaches, your teachers and the adults in your building, they they certainly got lives, too. And they certainly might be struggling with different things going on. 
Now, a lot of these adults, they're not going to share these things with, with the students. But every once in a while, if you get to know them a little bit, you spend a little bit of time talking with them, you'll be amazed at what kind of maybe things that they'll, they'll share with you. But get to know them a little bit better. And that's, you know, KYP, know your personnel. A couple of, you know, as I said here, know your personnel. And let's talk a little bit about communicate, digital communication. You know, a lot of times you say so much over email, text, social media, you communicate a lot. For example, digital communication, you know, when you're communicating things on social media, what, you know, check your feed sometimes, check your Instagram, you know, check your TikTok, check your Twitter. What, is, what does it say about you? Are you only retweeting and sharing things that talk about you? Or are you also retweeting, resharing and promoting your teammates when they do something well? Try to look at that. Are you, what does your uh, profile say about you? Is it all about you? Or is it about, um, you know, is it about other people as well? So check, check that out. For example, let's say you're up for an award. You know, they want people to vote for you to be a, a, an award winner of something. And you keep putting it out there on social media and your teammates do that. Well, then what if the next couple of weeks your teammate does is up for that same award, but you don't do anything to support them for that? What is that saying? First of all, it's screaming, whether it's intentional or not, it's screaming, I'm only about me. I'm not about helping my teammates. So think about all these different things. Also, I would highly encourage you. And, you know, I know I'm, I'm old now. I'm 47 ish. I think I got to start remember how old I am sometimes. You know, I, me personally, I don't like to share really important conversations over email and text. I like to have those conversations face to face or via phone call. But think about the messages you're sending. Also, when you're sending things via email and text and even social media, and you might be trying to be sarcastic, those things don't don't show up particularly well on that. OK, now let's talk a little bit in in person communication, phone calls, private face to face, practice game, class time. These are, you know, do you go talk to your teachers from time to time when you have a question or do you just send them an email? Go face to face, especially the, the more important the subject, go with them and try to get a face to face with them. Um, a phone call, like I said, if you've got something important to talk to with your coach, ask about talking on the phone or talking face to face with those different things. Those things are really important and I don't think are always uh, best suited for text, text messages or email. And I, I will tell you, and that's just KYP, know your personnel or your teammates. Sometimes you need to have that private face-to-face -face conversation with them. And go back to the KYP principle. You ought to know sometimes you need to hit the, hit the guy, your teammate, in the moment of when something happens. Sometimes it's best to sleep on it for a night. Now, I know for me, if after a game as a coach, and, you know, it's a loss and it's something really intense, depending on what the matter is, sometimes it's best to have those conversations the next day after I slept on it. Now, sometimes you need to have those conversations right away because they're that important when it comes to those different things. You know, one thing I wanted to talk about to be an active listener and observer. We talk about communication like all communication is us sending messages to other people. The reality is the best communicators are really good at being active listeners. What I mean by being an active listener you don't only listen with your ears, but you also listen with your eyes. You listen through the other person's actions. Are they paying attention to what they're saying? What is, have, have things changed with them? Is there just something not right in being an observer? I'm going to tell a real quick story. When I was a head basketball coach at uh, Ridgeview High School, there was one morning we had a, a 6 a.m. practice. And I, was I don't normally have 6 a.m. practices, but I told our guys it was really important. Everybody there, be right there at 6 a.m. I was going to give them the afternoon off. Please don't be late. I need everybody there. I just drilled it into them how important it was to be there on time. Well, the next morning, our best player wasn't there. I was hot. I was livid. I was like, I wonder why he's not here. I was really upset. So I text him. Now, I did text him. When I text him in the morning, I said, are you okay? Where are you? And the young man texted me, he said, I overslept, I'll be right there. And it was really odd because this was not this way this young man normally behaved. He was always the first in the gym, last to leave, always bugged me about being in the gym as much as he possibly could. When he got there to the gym about 20 minutes late, instead of me jumping him right from the get-go, I observed that this was not normal behavior for him. This was not something he normally did. I asked him, are you okay? And he told him, the coach, 
my dad passed away last night. He lived in Texas and it was unexpected. And you want to talk about a shock to my system. Now, I, I, I was really close to jumping on him for being late to practice when all I needed to do was ask him, are you OK? Tried to show a little bit of sympathy, a little bit of empathy to try to understand first why he may, may have been late. Part of that is being an active listener, understanding this is not this young man's normal behavior. And so instead of me jumping on him right away for being late, I asked a question and then he shared with me. So when you, it's really important that you become an active listener and observer to your teammates around you. Because at that point in time, that young man told me his dad passed away. I didn't care about him being late. I, I can't even believe he showed up at that point in time. And honestly, he didn't even practice the rest of the time. We just sat in the office and talked uh, about life. And those are some really important things uh, that you can do. Another thing to talk about, um, here's, and this goes into this, my next one, understanding before decision-making. An old principal of mine, Dr. Marty Martin, always says, understanding before decision-making. Before you make the decision what you need to do, try to understand what your teammate's going through. And I know I used a really big example of my uh, one of my players' fathers passing away, but it could be something as simple as maybe you know your teammate broke up with a boyfriend or girlfriend, and they're just having a bad day. Before you really get into them, try to understand why they're having a bad day. You know, not that I'm saying that excuses anything that they do if they're not giving great effort, but you might be able to approach the situation a little bit better on um, trying to understand everything uh, that's going on. So I always will encourage you, if you don't understand, um, you know, if you don't understand something that seems odd why they're acting the way they are, uh, as a Ted Lasso, if y'all ever watched that show, I think that's a fantastic show. Ted Lasso says, if you don't understand, be curious, ask questions. As a leader, ask questions of your teammate. Maybe try to understand why they're acting like this. May, may, you just, you might be surprised on the reason why. So those are some important things uh, to understand. Now, I've put my uh, email address up here. I've also got my Twitter. I'm pretty active on Twitter. You know, I would love for y'all to contact me anytime if you ever got any questions. You know, I think communication is something that is vitally important. You know, and I will tell you this as captains, you know, this is something you need to work with. You know, at the beginning of the game, I didn't, I didn't even touch on, I wish I'd, I'll touch on a little bit right now. How do you communicate with officials? Now, I know every sport's a little bit different. Do you have a good rapport with officials? Or is the only time you talk to officials is when you got a problem? That's not good communication. You need to have a good relationship with these officials. I'm not saying you got to be friends or anything like that, but be respectful, okay? I mean, because these, first of all, there ain't many people out there that I know of that are they're just dying to become high school officials in any sport. So you've got to treat them with the utmost respect. You may not always agree with their calls that they make, but I promise you, you're going to go ahead further with them if you show some, you're able to show some respect, you know, and it's positive communication, you know, in mixed in with maybe if you've got a problem with something, because it's okay to go to an official. Hey, if a person's holding you, it's okay to talk to them at a dead ball. Hey, can you watch so-and-so? They're, they're, they're grabbing, grabbing my jersey on this. You know, that's okay. But it's not okay if they grab jerseys, you throw your hands up and you're demonstrative. Ref, they're grabbing my jersey. You may be right in what you're saying, but how you say that is not correct. So I wish you all the best this year. I mean, I'm just, I'll challenge you to evaluate uh, your communication, challenge you to, to, to be a better communicator. You know, you're not, you are going to make mistakes as you communicate and that's okay, but just try to figure out how to be better each and every time. So I thank y'all for your time and um, I wish y'all the best this season. Thank you, Coach Combs. Um... KYP, know your personnel. Um, and, and working in athletics, we often hear we often hear that. But sometimes we're only with our teammates on the field, on the track, um, at, at practice. Are there other ways to really get to know your to know your teammates um, other than those three instances? Should should you would you suggest maybe hanging out with them periodically just to get to know who they are as an individual? Oh, I, absolutely. That that is something. You know, do y'all if you know your teammates work somewhere? They work at a festival. Go in and see them. Say hello to them. Go, uh, you know, go hang out. I, go to church with them. You know, or you invite them to church with you one day. You don't have to go and do everything, but y'all should, 
reach out and do things away from the court because that for me as a coach that's why i love summertime summer workouts we get to go to team camps together and to me it's not even about the games you play it's about the time off the court it's about how you spend time on the bus when you communicate with each other you're learning about your 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 brother your sister there because you're all you're battling hopefully all for the same goal to be the best that you absolutely uh, can be, but don't always make it about the business uh, of athletics. Uh, talk to them off the court, get to know them a little bit. And even if you, you maybe you go see a movie, maybe you go to a, uh, an, a spring athletic event or get some of the guys and girls together and go to another sport. If you're a guy's team, go, go support your girls team. Girls go support the guys and don't do it just during your sports season. You know, our, our basketball program, our guys, they, we need to be supporting our softball teams, our baseball team track, you know, soccer, all those, those build camaraderie. That's a time when you can let loose. The only thing I'd encourage, don't say anything negative to the officials during that time when you're out there che cheering them on together. En enjoy some good, good, clean fun, but uh, be supportive. And that goes back to that sportsmanship, sportsmanship piece. Well, thank you all three of you all for giving us those pointers from each person we had from Mrs. Walla. Well-being, the well-being of others from Coach Puckett. A captain is not a choice. It is not a popularity contest. And from Coach Combs, know your personnel. Those are the, if you had to take anything from each of them, like Ms. Walla said, the shorter, the better. And the quick and swift. You can remember the quick and swift, not trying to remember everything. So I truly, truly, truly appreciate you all taking your time out to come and present to our spring sports captains. Um, before we go, I definitely need to let you all know what's happening this weekend in the South Carolina High School League. It is jam-packed. Uh, Friday and Saturday, we have the individual wrestling state finals in Anderson, South Carolina. Also, Friday and Saturday and Monday, we have the upper and lower state finals for girls and boys basketball. Informational tickets and the brackets can be found at www.schsl.org. And once again, thank you all so much for attending today's Spring Sports Captain's Leadership Workshop, sponsored by Farm Bureau Insurance. And I truly, truly, truly hope that you all had some things to take with you and help you, hope you be help you be successful as you go on about your activities over the spring. Thank you, and good luck this season. <laughs>